हरि ओम एंड गुड मॉर्निंग माई डियर चिल्ड्रन आई एम हैप्पी टू वेलकम यू टू द मैजिकल वर्ल्ड ऑफ इंग्लिश लिटरेचर दिस मॉर्निंग वी शैल एनालाइज द कंक्लूडिंग पार्ट ऑफ द पोएम अ फोटोग्राफ रिटन बाय शर्ली टॉल्सन लेट्स बिगिन विद लाइन्स टेन टू फिफ्टीन फ्रॉम सम ट्वेंटी थर्टी ईयर्स लेटर टिल लेबर ईज ऑफ लॉस the poet recalls how after 20 or 30 years later perhaps when the mother was 30 plus of age or 40 years or so she would have looked at the old photograph and felt amused on seeing herself and her two cousins betty and dolly she further recalls how the elders at home had taken good care to instruct them about a suitable attire or dress for their holiday visit to the beach the tone of the poem is slowly but surely changing the poet's personal grief suddenly grips her and she says that the mother's loss was the jubilant happy delightful experience she had with the cousins at the beach she has lost those cherishable moments of her childhood while for the poet it's even more intense sorrow because the mother is dead now that's indeed an irreparable loss both rai both that is the loss of childhood or the beach holiday during the childhood for the mother and the mother is dead and that's a bigger loss for the poet now let's look at the word rai which is a combination of several emotions like disappointment sadness overwhelming grief annoyance displeasure dried up emotions and so on with labored ease of loss here the figure of speech or poetic device or literary device or the figurative language used is oxymoron now oxymoron is used in the expression labored ease and both contradict each other the two words the grief was fresh and unbearable when the poet had lost her mother quite naturally she couldn't come to terms with that irreparable loss that cruel reality the death of her mother she had labored hard and slowly able to accept the loss and that is what is expounded in the word ease an oxymoron as you understand is the use of two words that oppose each other or contradict each other now moving on to line 16 to 19 she has been now she has been dead till silent silences now the poet who is the speaker says that her mother had died some 20 or 30 years back and she is alone the photograph has been unintentionally cruel to her but it has unveiled unearthed or brought out all her buried emotions she had managed to overcome her grief but now fresh sorrowful emotions choke her and of this circumstance that is the circumstance referring to the description of the beach holiday and all about the happiness experienced by the mother and her girl cousins the poet is not able to describe further about that circumstance the silence of the photograph aggravates or adds to her sorrow and brings in fresh emotions of sadness her grief swells inside her she experienced a kind of numbness a kind of vacuum or void or emptiness or stillness the inert or the inactive still photograph stares at her and she is overcome with grief its silence stifles her expressions that is puts an end to all her overflow of powerful feelings and so she stops abruptly silence silences her as is alliterative the alliteration of the s sound is significant here now let's look at some of the points to ponder over sweet memories bring renewed joy while unpleasant ones submerge us in the darkness of gloom and despondency holidays are meant for de-stressing rejuvenating and for enjoying our leisure time 
Nothing is permanent except change. Nature is permanent in dire contrast to human existence. When the loss is purely personal, it gets exacerbated each time we look at the object that evokes memory of the loved one. In other words, Shirley Tolson's grief becomes intensified each time she looks at the photograph. Now for a quick recapitulation of the poem. The poem, as you see, is written from the point of view of the poet in the first person. It is as though the poet is talking to us, describing an old photograph encased in a cardboard frame. Perhaps she found it while going through the mother's possessions. The photograph is of three girls at the beach taken next to the waves where they had paddled. The girls are smiling at the camera, a happy photograph. They are smiling through their hair, says the poet. With that phrase, she brings to the mind of the reader the feeling of standing on the seashore. The sea washes their feet, the saline breeze brushes their hair. The poet paints the picture with such reality using only a few well-chosen words, so well that we feel like we too are sharing this memory with the girls. The sea which appears to have changed less washed their terribly transient feet. It is from this line that the mood of the poet's narration changes. The sea, an important part of the photo, still exists, whereas her mother and perhaps the younger cousins as well as has as well have been subjected to time's cruelty and perished or grown old. The young girls in the photo grew into different people than they were at that age. Yes, my dear children, we have now come to the end of this presentation. Hope you have a thorough understanding of the poem now. Thank you very much. Keep smiling. Happy learning. Bye-bye. Hari